The number of IPOs has skyrocketed over the past five years, with 2021 hosting a record amount and 407 happening in the US alone. There has also been a massive increase in the last year in the funds raised by newly issued companies from IPOs. For example, in the US, IPO proceeds have increased from $74 billion in 2019 to $346 billion in 2021. The factors causing this are many, but this boom in IPOs tells us a lot about current market conditions and the possible trends to watch out for. One of the reasons IPOs are booming is the ease of which companies can now list on public markets due to the introduction of a SPAC or Special Purpose Acquisition Vehicle which involves a shell company created solely for the purpose of raising money for the IPO, then acquiring or merging with the company that wishes to go public. However, this is not the main factor driving the increase in the number of IPOs, and a case could definitely be made that current market valuations are the driving force. The reason for this is as follows. IPOs happen most when the market is overvalued compared to historic standards. The Schiller PE is one of the most useful ratios when trying to estimate the realism and rationality in current stock valuations. If the price earnings ratio is average compared to the historical long term, let's say 10 years, then you would expect markets to be acting rationally. Currently, however, the Schiller PE is incredibly high compared to the long term average, which means prices are high relative to company earnings, indicating that stocks were overvalued. This rise matches when the most IPOs tend to take place, and there is a surprisingly accurate overlap. For example, the dot-com boom at the turn of the century and the years just before the financial crisis show a peak in the relative number of IPOs taking place. So why is this? Well, when there's huge demand for the overall market, the issuing company also believes there will be high levels of demand for its new shares, meaning a higher chance of a strong valuation and to raise more funding from their equity. However, the thing to note is that years with a boom in IPOs are typically followed by a market crash, which is what we are starting to just see the beginnings of. According to the Wall Street Journal, only 34% of the IPOs that went public in 2021 are currently up on their starting price. Companies like Rivian, Robinhood, Coinbase, Udemy and Roblox are all down. Rivian and Robinhood in particular are down 50% and 62% respectively. And what this signals for the wider market is that we are due a correction. In the dot-com boom in the early 2000s, an IPO boom was swiftly followed by an IPO bust, dropping from 429 to 104 IPOs in the space of just one year. The reduction in the value of these IPO stocks is compounded by announcements from the Fed that interest rates will be rising this year which changes the dynamic for many investors. In a low interest rate environment, investors are searching for a return on capital in the stock market, as bonds or cash offer little for them and consistently fail to match inflation. Therefore, money tends to flow out of bonds and into stocks and real estate. However, when rates start to increase, the opposite effect takes hold, and investors will want to see more grounded and realistic pathways to profitability and growth rather than investing in Rivian, for example, which at the time of its IPO had not even delivered a single electric vehicle to any of its customers and had barely begun production at all. There's a chance that SPACs continue due to the ease at which companies can go public through them, but on the whole I think we are unlikely to see the levels of mania around IPOs from investors that we have previously seen due to the economics shifting substantially this year. It's now pretty clear that we have reached the peak of the IPO boom, which therefore means a bust is likely, indicating that there will be difficulty in the wider markets for some time.